Today we will talk about uh, sampling strategies. The way we choose our samples will play a very critical role in doing good statistics. We will first focus on one of the key features of a good sample, that is randomness. And then we will soon realize that that is not the only consideration that we might need to keep in mind. Yeah, the basic goal over here is to minimize what is known as the bias in the sample. We begin by defining the sampling frame, which is a listing of all the individuals in the population that we want to sample from. Examples would be a listing coming from the telephone book uh, directory or the list of all student IDs on campus if we are sampling the campus population. An important consideration to keep in mind is that we might not always have a sampling uh, frame at hand. We will discuss uh, three elementary sampling techniques, uh, which are simple random sampling, stratified sampling, and cluster sampling. An important thing to keep in mind is that in practice, you would usually use a combination of all three of these uh, sampling strategies. So let's begin with simple random samples. A simple random sample depends on two important considerations. The first is that every object in the sampling frame has to have equal chance of being in the sample. The second consideration is that every subset of size n, here n is the size of the sample, has to have an equal chance of being the sample that you choose. It's an interesting exercise to figure out uh, scenarios where condition one might be true, but condition two isn't. So uh, do think about it. Simple random samples have many advantages. For example, choosing one would involve simple procedures that depend on random number generators. The sample that we get from this procedure is going to be unbiased and it would require minimum advance information about the population. That is, we might not have to care about the individual characteristics of the object in the population. It also works well in situations where the experiment involves repeated sampling, the cost of sampling being low, and finally, when the population does not have a lot of diversity in that the variation across different objects in the population is low. So what are the disadvantages of uh, this uh, sampling strategy? For every object to have an equal chance of being in a sample would require you to have access to the entire sampling frame. This is usually not feasible if the population is large or if the sampling frame is not available. A more serious consideration is if the population is diverse. That is, there is a lot of variation among individual objects in the population or that the population follows a predefined distribution. In which case, the chosen simple random sample might not be reflective of the population. Stratified sampling is going to try to address this problem. So the basic idea about stratified sampling is to divide the population into mutually exclusive groups that we will call strata. We will expect the objects inside the strata to be homogeneous with respect to a certain property. For example, nationality, race, uh, color, etc. We will then construct simple random samples within each of these stratas and our final sample is going to be the union of each of these uh, simple random samples coming from the strata. When stratifying a population, we have to keep in mind that each of the strata are homogeneous with respect to a given property. We have to also make sure that all the strata are mutually exclusive and exhaustive, which is to say that 
any grouping of this data is going to result in empty intersection and that the union of all this data are going to give you the entire population. There are some good advantages with uh, stratified sampling. Uh, for example, the sample in this scenario is going to be representative of the population with respect to the property that is used to define the strata, which results in improved precision. For stratified sampling to work, we still need access to the sampling frame, which can be thought of as a disadvantage, uh, which is taken care of uh, using cluster sampling. The strategy for cluster sampling is to divide the population into mutually exclusive clusters and then apply uh, a simple random sampling procedure to choose uh, a simple random sample of a subset of these clusters. A desired sample is then just the union of all the uh, clusters inside the simple random sample of clusters. The main advantages of cluster sampling is that it is cost effective. We don't have to deal with the logistics of dealing with the entire sampling frame. By logistics, I mean the traveling costs, uh, research and listing costs. Uh, it's important to note that when we are doing cluster sampling, each cluster must be representative of the entire population. In practice, uh, we often use a combination of each of these techniques. Uh, it is often called multi-stage uh, sampling, uh, where you kind of use cluster sampling followed by SRS or uh, a stratified sampling or various combinations of these uh, sampling techniques. So I will uh, now provide a brief pictorial visualization of what stratified versus cluster sampling might look like. So assume our population is this rectangle and I have divided into four strata, strata one, strata two, strata three, and four. On the right hand side, I have divided into clusters, clusters one, two, three, four, five, up through eight, yeah? The difference between the strata and the cluster is that within a strata, there is homogeneous behavior whereas a cluster is more representative of the entire population inside the rectangle, yeah? So for stratified sampling, we will do a SRS inside each of the four samples, uh, four strata. Uh, you notice the four SRSs that I've identified in red. For cluster sampling, we are going to do an SRS on the set which contains eight numbers, that's one through eight. My final samples are going to be, in the case of stratified sampling, the union of each of the SRS uh, uh, samples, whereas in the case of cluster sampling, I'm going to do a SRS on a set of eight elements. Assume we get three, five, and eight. Those are the clusters that are going to end up inside my sample. Notice that the sample coming from cluster sampling contains the entire clusters, uh, uh, three, five, and eight. And if this were multi-state sampling, we might have done a stratified sampling procedure in each of these three chosen uh, clusters to get our desired sample. This is all about sampling for now. Thank you for watching and I will see you around. Take care.